arguably one of the worst situations you could ever find yourself in, at the back of the grid in a GT2 car on a public server in Assetto Corsa. Before we get going I'd like to thank viewers for activating insane British commentary mode and also I'd like to apologise for those drivers that I managed to murder over the course of this race. We've got a Heli Corsa on, we're going to be using Heli Corsa to hopefully get through this uh, <laughs> full grid of cars on a public server. This is going to be an absolute mess. Just the boss in front of us from the stream, Lufferov and a couple of other people joining us from the stream as well. Of course, it being in the rig on Tuesday and Wednesday. But here we go, the lights are off and it's go, go, go. Josh the boss a bit slow. Lopez in front, Chris Knox on the left. Murray Hollyweck and Grey Alien NL on the right. Roy Batty slowing down early, trying to avoid the crash. And it looks like the first the first jump at the Grand National here. But we've uh, somehow got through that. Must be like four places as car sideways. We've got through that. Come on. <laughs> oh, Josh the boss still alive with this. Ivan Fontana to the left, Yate in front, another guy from our stream. It looks like we're going to be going up the in outside of Eau Rouge here. We're going to break because there's understeer. You've got to watch out for on the first lap as the tyres warm up. Through the corner, we survived it and we've gone from 22nd to 8th place in the space of a kilometre or so. Incredible driving and Josh the Boss also surviving the race start. Well done, Josh the Boss. As we get to the first uh, uphill corner, there's more carnage to be expected. Breaking a little bit late there. Thread away through. Seventh place now. Sixth place. Let's not get taken out. We've got through. Whoa, he almost hit us on the left hand side. You see his yellow car. And oh my god. British commentary mode has been activated. British commentary mode has been activated. I don't know why Sloppy has donated a pound. He's gone insane. But <laughs> he's the champion of the ninjas. Here we go. It's Josh the Boss, followed by Grey Alien, round the corner. It's going to be tight as we try and thread up the inside. Josh the Boss passes Grey Alien NL. Unbelievable moving between the cars. Breaking late here, we're back on his taillights. Look at the DGX sponsored rear bumper of the car. Zeal, the secondary sponsor, as we almost go in the sand pit. And, and... We move up close, but we put too much brake on. We've had to go almost full opposite lock in a GT2 car. The Ferrari 458 GT2, full opposite lock. Not what you want to be doing. That's a good way to scrub through your tyres. We're still on the first lap of this eight-lap race. Great Alien is in front of us. Behind us, JM Rocker. Josh the Boss holding out third place. It looks like this is going to be the pack that's set for the remainder of this race. We're going to have to work our way forwards and catch up as we go onto the brakes. Oh, we almost rear end him. We didn't break soon enough. We're going to have to get back on the track. Otherwise, we're going to get Kunos curbing penalty as the shadows go across the car. And we've lost at least two seconds. Fifth place at the moment as we come into the downhill point of the track. And we've got a car behind us. The Source completed. Eugenio Capotti comes on the right, but who's that on the left? It's Jim Rocker. He powers on through like a laser beam through a window. There's no stopping. Oh, Rouge is going to be taken at full speed. We lift. We come back in. The car bites in onto the track over the left hand curbing, over the right hand curbing. We've got another car behind us. We've been going far too slow here. We need to concentrate more on the driving, less on the commentary. It's Tommy B. Tommy B, 68. He's probably 68 years of age, and he's going to be pushing. Who's going to break last? It looks like it's me as we try and fed on through. Oh, we've got... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> we've caused an accident, but we've rejoined the track. The marshals not noticing anything. Alan Lopez taps Tommy B68. Tommy B68 responds with counter steer. Corrects his car as we go off road. The driving is terrible, but that's one way to pass a vehicle semi legally. Somehow we got a place, but then we lost it back to Roy Batty. Roy Batty in front, followed by Marco Van Godoni, followed by Tommy B. We've been losing places. We gained them on the first lap. And now we're giving them all back up. We're going to have to concentrate on the driving here. Focus. <laughs> less, less driving into people. Uh, for those of you watching, don't drive like this. Uh, I do not recommend commentating whilst driving if you want to make friends on public servers. But Roy Batty 
slow round that corner. We go ride on the Asher Chaff. Marco, Vagilinti, whoa, Vagilinti breaks, Roy Batty on the left hand side, <laughs> we don't want to understeer off into the Batty, watch out because the Batty is in front, the, the Batty of Roy Batty is being driven by <laughs> Roy Batty, it's, it's by <laughs> Roy Batty, Roy Batty. We're going to come up behind Batty. We're going to overtake Roy Batty. Watch out. Up the inside of the Batty. And the Batty to the right. To the left. Late on the brake. And we pass the Batty. And we lock up the wheels. But look. We've managed to get some traction as we stay in second. Then go into first. And we've passed the Batty. The Batty. The Batty of Roy Batty is behind us. Marco Vigianoni is in front we're in eighth place now as we calm down we've got to get into a bit of a flow so far we've been driving like a baboon out of control but it's okay we've got past two cars spinning on the uh i've forgotten the name of the corner there terrible terrible commentary we forgot the names of the corners we need to do more studying before we get on the track marco vajodi through o rouge left right yellow flag where's the car gonna be he's parked in the middle of the track as we avoid him at a full Where's the speedo on this car? Oh, there's my digital speedo on the dashboard. Why am I looking at the virtual when I can look at the uh, display? 200 or so kilometers per hour. Probably a fatal accident if we drove into him. Uh, but Marco Vizzoni is slow through there. We understeer a bit more than expected as we go wide onto the curbing. We're going to have to pick things up, but we found ourselves in fifth place. Somehow, after murdering three drivers, the marshals have forgiven us. The other drivers have forgotten, and we're still going. Uh, Kunos uh, don't have safety rating, fortunately. Some servers do, though, uh, but we, we've worked hard to get our mini rating high, and that's uh, kept us up top, so we're all okay. As we break down the hill, three of eight laps, coming to the midpoint of the third lap here. Marco Vagioni, he's pulling away from us. We need to get onto his tail. We need to push up fast and get behind him. I don't know why he extended the B there. I thought that would give me more grip. Clearly, it didn't work. Back on the power. Astro turf to the right. We use a little bit of it. Back on the brakes. <laughs> Clap your hands. Do the cha-cha. And we're going to get, hopefully, onto Marco Vagioni's tail. Tail? <laughs> <laughs> his rear bumper. What, where did I come up with this? I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Through Blanchemont, left-hander, followed by the next left-hander. The uh, same corner. It's just uh, you know, it's like an extended double corner. And onto the brakes. Brake at the shadow or oh, the white line. Get into first gear. First gear. Try and carry speed through here without sliding. That's the tricky part of the chicane. And we're going to catch up with Marco Vigioni. It looks like Marco Vigioni is actually pushing on the car in front of him. Grey Alien NL, who is who we were battling with before when we unfortunately drove into him. So, lap number four, the midpoint of the race has begun. This is where focus and uh, sheer attention to detail uh, come into practice on on a track like this. Uh, of course, you can only focus by doing British commentaries. More Scottish. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> We're not even going there. That was terrible. We'll forget that. Forget that suggestion. Ah, oh, round the corner. Round the other corner. That's what the corners are now called. Now, oh God, who's donated? Now I can't keep up with the commentary. <laughs> Bloody hell. Marco Vagioni in front of us. I'm going to lose my voice in a minute. Sloppy, you stop being an idiot. He's going to... Right, he's going to ask for the money back on, on PayPal because I know him and he's a tight git. Scotland is part of Britain. Marco Vagioni. Oh, bloody hell. I'm going to murder you. How can you afford to donate after you bought your OSW? <laughs> you're just ridiculous. I'm not giving you money back. I'm not buying you a drink. This is like, this is going in the bank account. This is going in the uh, Game of Muscle streaming fund to pay for dinner tomorrow. Okay, we're behind Marco Vigioni. What do you want me to do? Seeing as I'm, I'm whoring myself out now, what do you want me to do? Do you want to go full Murray Walker? Bloody hell. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll begin at the end of this lap. Uh, hopefully. I want to get closer to Marco Vigioni. To actually get on his tailpipe. To, to make a move on him. To, to make the spectacle happen. Full Murray. I could bloody... All the trimmings. You don't even eat beef. Uh, all the trimmings, please. I'd like a full Sunday roast. Oh, no. That's it. Lost control. Okay, so we're coming up to the start-finish line. Fifth. Four. And it's lap five of eight at this beautiful, spa, sunny day. And it looks like, yes, Gamer Muscle is in fifth place. Marco Vigioni. Followed by, who is it? We can't quite see them. The telemetry not displayed. But it's Marco Vigioni battling ahead. It looks like they're going through Eau Rouge. Surely there could be car contact. But no, they've both got through, I think. Following on the corners further ahead, there will be an accident. And that will be where we will be able to exploit. But look, they're battling up ahead to the left. To the right is Marco Vigioni. Who is he battling? We can't quite see. The computer's not displaying the data. And... He's got up the inside. He's going to break late. Surely there's contact. No, there's not contact. It's Grey Alien. As, oh dear, we've got distracted and gone wide. But the marshals, the marshals caught napping because no penalty was given to us for cutting the track there. Grey Alien NL has lost place to Marco. Marco Van Point. Marco Vigioni. I don't know what's going on. Marco Vigioni. For some reason, we thought he was called Marco Van Point because his name flashed on the screen and changed. And Rystick has donated two pounds. Absolutely incredible stuff. Everybody going wild as Grey Alien NL fights Marco Vigioni. We go wide. Our tyres screaming over the AstroTurf. The marshals again not noticing that we've just created a yellow flag. So they have in fact noticed but decided not to penalise our terrible driving. As Grey Alien moves in front. Losing time to Marco Vigioni, but we're gaining on Grey Alien as we slide over the track like a penguin on an iceberg that's just been hit by the Titanic as we go onto the AstroTurf. The tyres, the tyres not wanting to stick to the road. This driving is unacceptable. This is the kind of amateur league driving that you expect in GP2, not GT2, although GP2 is better than GT2. I don't know what I'm talking about as we go towards the end of lap number five. It's going to be intense. Can we get the speed through these corners? Oh my god, there's been <laughs> a bloody donation. I am not going to have a voice tomorrow, guys. Grey Alien NL pushing through. Sloppy in space, donating a quarter of a million pounds. He's going to want his money back. He's going to want a refund because we're not going to improve on this race position as we come into lap six of eight and grey alien is still in front with a 42 ping it looks like he's going to be trying to push his car through eau rouge on old rusty tires as he goes he cuts the inside he cuts the outside oh he's cut the track too much and we follow behind him we've not been penalized though but grey alien it looks like he lifted through fear of driving into the wall it could be an opportunity for ourselves to catch on to him on these final corners in the closing laps of this exciting race. Fourth, third, understeer. The marshals again surely are going to be wanting a word with this driver after the atrocious track cutting that's been going on as we catch ever closer to Grey Alien. The question will be a battle for fourth position in this race. Can we get closer? Can we make something of this fifth position and transform it from fifth into fourth? As we come to the midpoint of lap six of eight. And I forgot to breathe and we almost pass out. <laughs> As we go down the slope of double goosh. I'm probably sure I've said that wrong. I can't be the name of the corner. A grey alien still in front. This is why commentators have water to hand, because it's impossible to keep going. Grey Alien NL is losing time. We're sliding, but that turns out to be the faster way through the corner. Grey Alien darting right, darting left. Look at his car. He's not driving smooth. He's not using the traction. He's losing control of his vehicle. He's losing time. He's going to lose the race. He's going to lose his position. 
if he keeps it up, we're moving on him ever closer. Look at this, unbelievable. Through Blanchiment one, through Blanchiment two, and we come to the final chicane on this track. Break, break, break on the white line. First, yeah, oh, he's under pressure. They've both made mistakes. Oh, he's, he's lost it. He's lost control of the car. That's a disaster. Grey Alien, Marco Vigioni goes to the pits. Grey Alien has absolutely lost control of his vehicle. Terrible driving, exploited by ourselves. <sighs> I'm forgetting to breathe as we go into lap seven of eight. Absolutely incredible driving. The looked like we were fighting for fourth place, but the accidental pit stop of Marco Vigioni, followed by Grey Alien NL losing control have caused us to move into bronze, which it looks like there's a 0.3 second gap to second place, but he's nowhere to be seen. Looks like there's an error with the computer system. And I'm actually in the process of passing out because I'm forgetting to breathe here. Lap seven of eight. <laughs> I'm actually gonna pass out. Breathe, breathe, breathe. In fact, if you say breathe, you're not breathing. <laughs> it's all clear. It looks like this race might be in the bag. Surely, surely not. We started in 22nd place. We battled our way through the cars. We're still going. Don't worry, Sloppy. I know you're going to try and claw your money back, but we'll keep going anyway because nothing is better than Murray Walker. Driving a Ferrari 458 GT2 at Spa on the brakes to the right. Understeer, understeer. The tyres are off. The tyres, the tyres of this car no longer want to stick to the road. Struggling for grip. We're going to have to slow things down a bit. Wait for the understeer to calm down. Then get back on the power. Off the throttle, on the throttle. It's not smooth driving, but it's been enough to guide the car from 22nd place all the way to 3rd place as we approach the final corners of the second to last lap. And there's a yellow flag up ahead. Could that be? Could it be Cap? <laughs> what kind of name is that? It looks like there's been an accident. But it's not a competitor that's in the running. And there you see the front runners on the final lap. A good two quarters ahead. There's going to be no chance to catch them. But we get the white flag from the marshals. It is lap eight of eight. As we approach the beginning of the final lap. And Eau Rouge in the distance should be able to see the front runners. Moving up through Eau Rouge right in the distance. Can you see them? No, they've already gone through it. They're that far ahead. They must be. It's 12 second gap. Appalling racing. But bearing in mind that we did start from 22nd place. Surely, surely not. This will be the achievement of the decade in public server racing. As we approach the Kemmel Strait, driving through onto the brakes just before the curbing. Five, four, three. It's not a rocket launch because you don't go into first as we go. Weaving the car around these corners, using the curbing, the Kunos curbing to unsettle the car. Not the fastest way through, but it's working so far. As long as we've got four wheels on this vehicle, as long as we've got tyres, as long as we've got an engine that works, we will be finishing this race and we will be going home happy with a bronze medal, which is meaningless in the context of sim racing. But so is life. Everything is meaningless. An existential moment from the driver as we approach the downhill section. There's a yellow flag. Is it the front runners? Have they had an accident? What is going to happen? This is what the, <laughs> the commentators do on F1 TV. There'll be like a, a four, <laughs> 40 second gap and they'll be like, he's going to come second. Look, he's pushing. Will he come second? It's unbelievable. He might make it. Uh, I, think we, I think we're there, guys. I think we're almost at the finish line. As he comes around the final three corners to get to the finish line. Just a couple to go for this monumental Spa public server race. The first time in history that we've come from 22nd to 
third place onto the brakes for a final tie. Four, three, two, one. Rocket. Thunderbirds are go. Final corner. Unbelievable driving. He looks at the crowd. The crowd. The crowd. Don't move at all because they're all cardboard cutouts. But nonetheless, an extraordinary race. Thank you uh, for the donations, everybody. <laughs> Uh, Roy Stick, sloppy, he's gonna, he's gonna ask for his money back, but uh, it was good fun doing the British commentary, and I now have no voice, and I'm hyperventilating.